Well, I'm very uh, proud of the comeback of my team. It was a uh, tough game. I thought well, they had their guys ready to play, and uh, I thought they played awfully well the first half. I did not think we played as well in stretches, but uh, the halftime was interesting. And it was uh, I saw some guys really come together. We all know it's been a you know a, a time when there's a lot of distractions, and I think sometimes guys just have to focus in on their job and then deal with the other stuff after, and that's what they did. So uh, got a lot of play out of Cassius Winston in the second half, and that was big because he didn't have a very good first half. And I thought Josh Langford was a big, big difference maker in the start of the second half. Jerry Jackson and Miles Bridges did a lot of things. So I'll take some questions. Coach, Tisha Thompson, outside the lines, in 2010, Travis Walton was charged with assault and battery for punching a female student in the face. There were witnesses. She was injured. Why was he allowed to continue with the coaching staff and be with the team while Curtis were pending? Well, as I said before, you know, we'll cooperate with any investigation, and I always have. Um, we've done it before, and we'll do it moving forward. And that's about all I'm going to say on it, that we did cooperate with everything. We want to give you every opportunity to answer questions. There's a lot of questions. A big one is, why did Travis leave the program in 2010? I, I, I don't know what you mean. He graduated. He was with your staff throughout 2010. An allegation One came third. forward later that year that from a, from a woman and her family to the athletic department that he and two of their players raped her. He then left the program later that year in 2010. Why? To be honest with you, I don't remember why he left. I know he went to Europe to play. And, and um, as you know, I'll, I'll I'll still say I'll cooperate with any investigation that's made. Uh, I did it then, I did it before, and uh, I'm not going to answer any questions that aren't pertaining to either basketball or things that I am not going to talk about right now. Let me ask you this question then. Looking back at the way sexual assault allegations have been handled by your basketball program, do you have any regrets? I've cooperated with every investigation, every one. And I will continue to cooperate with every investigation, every one. How the weight your team responded today with that first half where they maybe struggled a little bit? Was it is was it as much everything that's going on or was it divided with the atmosphere here? Or, uh, I thought the atmosphere here was phenomenal. Um, you know, it's very hard for me to say it's because of what's going on when there's people that have been through a lot more than than my guys have been through. Um, yes, this is something that affects them, but not nearly as much. Don't feel sorry for me or them. There's there's 140 some uh, women that uh, we'll feel more sorry for, and I thought we did our best job of trying to deal with uh, all the distractions out there. When you go on the road, there's distractions of the opposing team and their fans, and they've got a credible fan base here. And uh, I will say that, uh, you know, I thought we played pretty well until a couple stretches. We had a couple of bad stretches. We got a little follow trouble. That was the difference. Uh, what was the key for the 18-4 run to start that second half? Well, Jared Jackson, uh, I thought, had a big part of that. You know, we said we could run and that he wasn't running. and. Uh, we didn't think he was running hard enough, and we also knew that he got in foul trouble. So um, I think that was a big part. I think Cassius Winston was the other part. Those two guys kind of brought us back. And, and the, the, the unsung hero was probably Josh uh, Langford. He uh, not only scored some points, but he did a pretty good job on her, and that was uh, a difference. Tom, you guys hit, I think, 11 free throws in the last minute. Um, how big you for the team to be able to rely on that? Well, you know, those of you that have followed us for years, we've been kind of average free throw shooting team, it seems like, more often than not. And uh, we said it this summer that free throws are going to be a big, big part of, you know, winning big games. And we needed every free throw to win them. So I, I do think that that was uh, 
that was very important. I think that was something they worked on this summer. Tom, what's been your message uh, to those guys about how the speaking media kind of deals with things like that? You know, I've never closed my locker room, as those of you know, in 23 years, and I don't plan on closing it ever. I, you know, this is, um, I think there's been more life lessons learned uh, this year than ever. And so, uh, you know, I, I had to tell them to, you know, watch what you say because even your coach mixed up a word and and that was uh, pretty tough. But uh, I said just continue. And this was my message before the game, at halftime, and after the game. Continue to realize that there's people that have gone through a lot and they get an opportunity to help the healing process a little bit. Just a little bit. I've heard from you know a couple people that were involved, and um, and that's the only message I gave them. So they're they're free for you guys. They're I've never closed a locker room. I never plan on. Do you want them to put up walls or or pay attention? Actually, what's going on? No, I want them to pay attention. I mean, we 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 have a lot of work ahead of us. That you know, I hope the day comes and. We can be a real, real, real part of the healing process face to face and help you. Um, so I, I didn't tell them to put up any walls, but I I said, you got to watch what you say. I what, mean, what do you tell them when it comes to the way they conduct themselves around women? Now, there's a good question. And I tell them every day, at the end of every practice in a hub, I go over an academic thing couple social things and a basketball thing and that takes place every single day and it takes place um, after every single game and every single trip. So if you were emotional after this one, what was it about this game that made you emotional? It's been, uh, it's been hard to focus in on basketball because when I do I feel guilty. You know, I mean, there's so many things that you don't know, and uh, I just, I feel guilty putting any of, talking about anything else than those women that I watched, and uh, that's about, um, I'm sure it was draining at the end for me. I was also emotional, because I'm an emotional guy, and I was, I was proud of the job they did, and I hope that, um, I hope people will rally around them. I, and I hope we'll rally around people that need us. Tom, take the last one. Looking at, at what Miles and, and Nick did today, and what does that say about this team? And, you know, those two go six and twenty between them. And still managed to make some. Yeah, Miles had a rough day, but you know, he had a big block late. He made a couple big plays. He had a big free throw, and I was, I was proud of the way my team played, guys. I really, really was. I was, I was disappointed in the first half. I was disappointed in the end of the first half, but I was proud of them. Thanks, guys.